And today we're taking a look at Swords and Stones by Tim Posniak. And it's an independently published game, and we'll talk more about it after the intro. So the game we're taking a look at today is Swords and Stones, and the author is Tim Posniak, and it's very, very reasonable. It's $4.99 for the PDF on drive-thru. And I should say, you know, full disclosure and all that, that the author Tim sent me a review copy of this for free, so I do appreciate that. Um, so we're going to take a little look at it here, and you know, I'll give it a review and tell you what was what I like and maybe some things that I think could have been a little bit clearer. Uh, there's not a whole lot of that. But if you like what you hear today or you want to support an independent RPG author, like I said, it's very reasonable over on DriveThru. Now, here's one thing I like. He did a lot of the artwork, which I think is just wonderful. And um, he also got some royalty-free graphics, just so you know where the artwork came from. But specifically says... Here's some ideas that I borrowed from Knave by Ben Milton, Index Card RPG by Runehammer, and Shadow Dark by Kelsey Dion, and many more independent RPG content creators. So he specifically tells you who his sources are here, and that's just great. And then you, you're going to see this is very um, independently published. You know, you'll, you'll see that as you read through here. You know, and these things are clearly labors of love. So he kind of gets into a little table of contents and some terms for the game. And uh, instead of Dungeon Master, he says Game Host, uh, then there's Players and PCs. And he walks you kind of through all the basic stuff that you need um, for anything, um, you know, kind of what is a role-playing game. And again, there's some of what I think is specifically his artwork there. Now, when you get into character creation, it's very much like you're used to, except there's no classes. Um, so depending on what you what stat you decide to put your modifiers in and improve on um, that determines you know do you want to be more of a magic user or a healer or a fighter and all that now an interesting thing I thought about this was instead of rolling your traditional 3d6 you know and then you have to look up what the modifier is he just goes right to the stat modifiers which I think that Nave does as well but they're rolled so he says you could either roll three to 66 to get your modifiers so if you want kind of a lower powered game you just roll three um, d6 and then put those bonuses into whichever three stats you like and i guess the others would be zero or you could just use 66 and then spread them out that way for slightly more higher powered game so it's an interesting way and it's very different compared to your usual you know roll 3d6 and look on the chart oh i got a 15 that's a plus one or plus two depending on um, which system you're playing in so because he keeps, you know, a lot of the things the same, this game, it would be very compatible if you wanted to run this game, but use an adventure from pretty much any OSR system should be, or even a modern system should be pretty easy to port over. Now, again, there's no classes. So PC start at 10 hit points and you increase by six each level. Uh, no need to roll. So you just go up by um, factors of six. And... It also says if your PC reaches zero, you're unconscious. And if you dip below one, you're dead. Um, and if you can survive for three rounds, you can roll one time 1d4 to recover. Um, but you must stake this or they'll need to wait until the next game day. So I think what he's saying here is that if you do get dead or you come back from the dead or come back from unconsciousness, you're kind of out for the rest of the day. So there is a consequence for... Um, getting down below zero hit points, you know, versus, oh, you get a heal spell and you're up next round. So I think that's a little bit more realistic there. Um, and then there's some random personality traits. If you want to do it that way, you can, you know, roll for your height or roll for your weight or your physique. Um, and then you have um, gearing up, and I believe you get 20 um, gear slots, which I believe is similar to Shadow Dark. So you can only carry so many things. Now, he also provides for free kind of an adventurer's journal on drive through RPG, which helps you keep track of your spell slots and all that. Uh, now, armor is a little different in terms of what he does is that you'll use armor as a modifier when you're ro and you roll to defend. We'll talk a little bit more about that when I get into combat. So here's a character sheet, not a whole lot different than you've seen in other character sheets, you know, very familiar here. Um, experience points, 
again, he suggests one XP per gold, maybe 20 XP per monster. And when you get up to a thousand, everybody goes up a level. Now, once you get to fourth level, um, if you survive that far, that's where you can start to really specialize. And then you specialize every two levels there on out. So spells work a little bit different in that you have to have these spell stones, which is a good incentive to go out and adventure because you're trying to find these spell stones to get more powerful or to find healing spells and things like that. But at level four, you're able to use them twice a day. So it's like you're able to remember them. So you're able to re, uh, retain up to four spells and use them twice a day. So that's the way he's kind of um, improving the spell slots. But until level four, you have to have the spell stones. But then there's some other things where you can get extra languages or some combat maneuvers. Uh, diplomat, you can talk your way out of almost anything. Um, so you can start to specialize your character a little bit more starting at level four. And then he specifically talks about some spell stones here like healing stones and tracking stones and stones of wonder. But then the um, next table here, you're able to roll and um, determine these two numbers. Um, how many spells does he have here? About 50 spells, 49. And I'm assuming that we're going to assume that they work very similar to you know, your standard spells like web or fireball. Um, and then those, again, you'd have them from the spell stone unless you get to level four where you can start to remember them. And he mentions magical items, although I don't think there's a lot detailed in here. And um, Ambite is the local gemstone because the world he calls it is Ambien. Then on page 15, he gets into that. And this is an alternative universe parallel to our own. However, humans do not naturally exist. So uh, occasionally humans are transported to the Ambien via the veil. Um, so somehow people can get over to this world, but for the most part, this is a world of elves and orcs and things like that. And he gives some bulleted lists here about these different characters. Uh, very, very standard things, bugbears and, um, kind of Sasquatch type creatures and goblins. So I'm imagining you could play those if you want. They don't have a lot of mechanical benefits, um, although each one does have one or two things like uh, can spit poisonous saliva up to five feet. So it's kind of a, a lizard man. Uh, very thick hide and can deflect range weapons to a point. And then he also gets into um, kind of the Underdark. And there are some different beings down there, like the drow or trolls and um, some other goblin-like creatures and things that would be down there. And there's sort of a forbidden zone area. Darmandu, which I guess would be a great place to go adventure because um, it's believed to be ancient magic dwells there and dangerous dark magics. And it's also sometimes called the empty. So I imagine monsters live there and, you know, it's a place you could go and explore. Then he gets into the mechanics of things and, you know, a lot of it's your, your basic stuff, but uh, and it gives you some examples here. So a lot of it is um, roll your d20 and add your modifier. However, combat's a little bit different. So for the initiative, this is very pl player facing. So each round, the players roll a 1d6 and you get to see if you attack or defend. So you could attack two rounds in a row or you could defend two rounds in a row. And again, that's where you're um, rolling your d20 and adding your armor modifier to see if you get hit. And... Um, one thing is if you make your damage roll, you only deduct one point of damage from the, the, the opponent's damage roll. So armor doesn't do a whole lot here. That's one little point you, know, you might want to think about changing or um, increasing or maybe using armor as a damage reduction. Um, and a natural 20 is pretty nasty. It's an instant kill. And um, if you roll a 1 you know, as a fumble... That's a critical fail, and you need to roll 1d6 for self-inflicted damage. So I guess you hurt yourself in that process. Um, so his combat is very, very simple and straightforward here, but it is a little different than standard um, Dungeons & Dragons, for example. Or What you could do probably also is just run it with your favorite combat system if you don't care for these um, alternative methods. Um, but they are here, here if you like them or to give them a try. And to be fair, I haven't tried it myself, so I don't know, you know how exactly it would play in play. Uh, so you know, give it a try or run a quick solo game of it and see if you like it. It's always worth trying something new. Oh, we've got a nice uh, kind of Conan-type artwork here. 
and then it gives you a sample dungeon. Now the sample dungeon isn't uh, fully fleshed out here, but he does give a lot of random tables. So again, for the five bucks, you could buy this and use it as a um, random dungeon generator, if you like, um, to get you some information and stocking your dungeon, what kind of gear might be in there, uh, what kind of monsters might be in there. And then he gives you a little chart here, which you can, I guess, check off to, you know, what's in there or add some notes um, for things that you might find. And then they gives the um, open gaming license here. I guess he published it under that. And then an ending page. So that's Sword and Stones. As I said, it's $4.99 on drive through And I hope I gave you a little preview to see if you like it. And again, thanks to Tim for sending me the review copy. So if you'd like to check out or purchase any of our products, we have three books that are in print. The Star Mermaid, The Dwarven Pickup Truck, and The Sky Tree. And the best place to get the print versions is through Amazon or Lulu. And also over on DriveThru, you can get the digital versions. Or you can get, we have a number of other adventures and character classes and even some stock art available on DriveThru. And then on the Roll20 Marketplace, we have some map packs and also um, character cards for use. So wherever you like to shop, odds are we're there. And hopefully, we hope that you'll subscribe and like the video, and we'll see you next time.